All right, so do you have a submersible sump pump that no longer works? And do you have the float switch, a brand new replacement part for the top? Do you want to learn how to safely and effectively do this yourself? Stay tuned, I'll show you how. Okay, so here's my sump pump area. This is an inch and a half PVC line that goes outside. And right down here, it's not a real pretty area of the house, but this is the sump pump area. And I have my check valve sitting outside of the water. It can be down in the water, but I like to keep it out. So in case you had to switch your sump pump, it's just a matter of disconnecting this clamp up here. And then you can just lift the sump pump out. So make sure that you have this unplugged from first before doing anything. All right, that way you're safe. All right, now go ahead and remove the sump pump. Oh, it's not very pretty. It's all like rusted and covered with uh, grit of some sort. This was a beautiful stainless steel rigid brand purchased from Home Depot. I've also purchased the Campbell Hotsfeld and whatever brand Lowe's sells. Eh, I can't think of it offhand. But anyways, I'm going to show you when this float switch goes bad, which they I think they recommend like every three years to take this out and replace it. It's a thirty-dollar part, and as you can see, uh, this is something. The first time it went out, I contacted the company. I found the serial number, the model number, everything off that, and they gave me a one-time free float switch. So I don't know if they do that for everyone, but they did it for me on this particular one. So I'm going to walk you through the steps on how you disassemble that float switch, and there's some electrical connections, as you can see. I'll walk you through. We'll see if we can get this thing going. So stay tuned. All right, so here's the instructions. I have done this one time before. Make sure... This is unplugged, very important. You do not want to get shocked. I have, you know, actually I'm pretty happy with the cobalt tools. I've got a relatively new Phillips screwdriver. This is the number two bit. And there's, it looks like there are three stainless steel Phillips screws to take off. So I'll do that. One. It's come up pretty easy. And there's three. Alright. Now, see if I can just remove this off the top. Oh. There is a lot of corrosion going on in there. Boy, that's really pretty bad looking. Alright, let's get a closer look here. Yeah, it looks like water just, whoops. Alright, if you take a close look in there, it looks like water. There's still standing water in there. It's corroded everywhere. I'm hoping I can disconnect the cables and hook it up relatively easy. So, okay, so I disconnected the old switch right here. And that was full of water. The new switch right here does have a new rubber gasket. So I would encourage you to clean this out, this little groove that the new gasket goes in. Because you don't want water infiltrating in there. So you may even need a Q-tip to go through and really clean that out. Like a wet Q-tip, go around it a few times. Get all the gunk out so the gasket will work properly. And then here's my new switch. And Okay, so now we're ready to install the new switch. Here is the rubber gasket that slides in that little groove. Make sure that's not twisted. And as you can see here... There are two black and one green. You can see the end right there. See how that little, it slides on top of a little post. And I'll just show you the instructions. It's just as easy as showing you on the pump itself. This is the very top. GRD for ground and two other little posts that stick up. So the green goes on the ground and the two black ones go on the other two posts. That's all it is to it. So I'm just going to connect these here. And then screw that down. Make sure that's facing the right way. All right, let's go that step. Okay, so here is the cap. I connect everything back. I put the gasket in nice and flat. Make sure it's not twisted. And I line the holes up and make sure that it's in there nice and snug. All right, now it's just putting these three screws back in. 
and just kind of go around evenly, tight them, tighten them down. A little on this side, a little on the other side, just so like one side isn't like super tight. And it's just good to. It's like when you're tightening the lug nuts on your car. Just, just my own practice. All right, there's only three. And the instructions show these long bolts right here. Do not touch those. There's no need to loosen those. All right. Nice and snug. You want to make sure these are, you don't want to over tighten it because then you might crack something, but just really nice and snug. So you're ensuring that no water seeps through. Okay, so now it's time for the moment of truth. What I did is I connected the pipe right back up with, as you can see, that Fernco type clamp on the check valve. And I don't know if you can see in the camera, I'm gonna plug this in to the one gang outlet. Keep your fingers crossed. Oh yeah, beautiful thing. New switch works. Hope you uh, find the video useful. If you do, please give me a thumbs up. It really helps support my channel. Thanks for watching my friends. Have a great day. So in the month of March, all the snow here is gonna start melting and it has to go somewhere that you don't want it to go in your basement or crawl space, so you'll be glad to have a sump pump that works effectively.